All right, what is up and welcome back. And today we have an awesome show because it's something, you know, it's it's common, right? And, and the show topic is is super simple. We planned it uh, really far in advance and it's it's called how to get rich quick. So this, it seems crazy, but how do, how do you get rich quick? Yeah, and the, the thing is we all talked and the, the answer is you can't. You can't get rich quick. Nope. Nope. Thanks guys. That's it. But anyway, obviously you can get rich. We have a show, but before we get into the show, lots happening, right? We had another massive bank failure. They've been bailed out. Downward pressure on the treasuries, right? Because people are, are scared of cash. They're they're scared. You know, they wanted to get into something real. Cash just disappears from banks these days. Maybe they're scared of banks. They're not scared of cash. Sure, scared of banks, but where else do you put your cash? Nobody likes to keep, I mean, when you're talking about large amounts of cash, if you're not keeping it in a bank, where do you put it? You have to buy an asset. Right. So that's putting downward treasury on or downward pressure. I can't even talk, guys. That's putting downward pressure on the treasuries. So if you can find a lender who's doing a loan on a swap over a treasury instead of prime, obviously that's going to be way more in your favor right now. So go out and find those lenders that are doing it. We've worked with several that have done that. Um, and it's working in our, our benefit right now. We also had another rate increase. I, we don't have to beat that to death. I know we've been talking about it forever, but uh, another quarter point hike on uh, the Federal Reserve or, or Prime. So we'll see how that pans out. And now we can we can kind of get into the show. Well, real quick, another point is we still have opportunities for investors to get in on our Princeton deal development. And then we also uh, stay tuned. But we've got a couple others launching too yep. uh, here in the, in the near future. Yeah, guys, very, very full pipeline. As you know, the the opportunities and the deals are exclusive to the investor list. It, it sounds fancy, exclusive, but really all you have to do is sign up on our website. So the criterionfund.com, you can hit a button that says join our investor list, and then boom, you'll get all the emails. Like Joel said, we're finishing up um, a six pad site development in Princeton, and we have a very full pipeline. So as soon as this one uh, fills up and closes out, we'll launch the next one. And we have one more after that. Um, already done which is is kind of weird yeah. we, we normally don't like just backfill the pipeline yeah. with fully done stuff yeah usually not that quick are we but so a lot going on yeah moving and shaking andy's andy's a mover and a shaker that's yeah. for sure all right anyway so topic for today yeah awesome topic right so the biggest thing we want to talk about and that's why we did this booth in the beginning is is there's really no way to get rich quick right if you're gonna do it right and you're going to do it, you know, outside of like becoming a crypto millionaire. It, it's a long process, right? And and most people are starting out with, uh, you nothing. know, most people yeah. start out with nothing. Yeah, nothing. the The or biggest lump negative. sum is like a tax yeah. return, or or you know, a COVID money, or or you know, something like that. Yeah, that's um, a great example. How many people are waiting for their tax return? They they want that two thousand dollar tax return so they can spend it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we were talking, and I, uh, I assume most people watch the podcast uh, because of Brian's good looks, but also Mostly. because they want to earn more money. And we're helping people do it through, through commercial real estate. But I think the majority of people that listen to the podcast, they don't have the money to invest with us. Yeah, uh, even at the $25,000 minimum. Yeah, right? like and for sure not 100000 And so we just thought it would be cool to, to talk about, hey, guys, what, if we were giving advice on how to get rich quick or quicker – what would we tell people? What are some some bedrock money ideas that we would say, look, this is the advice we would give you to get you from point A, maybe not having anything to invest, to putting $100,000 a deal with us. How do we get you there? And that's what we, we came up yep. with this list. I don't know if you like it, but we're going to hit you with it. Hit him. All right, Brian, first one. The first one is to spend less than you make. Woo! Seems, seems pretty obvious, right? And I'm going to add to it, spend dramatically less yeah. than you make. I'm going to add to it again. Eat shit. Yeah. And die. Which, which means... Okay, not don't die. <laughs> which yeah, mean, but... Yeah, literally, literally, like ramen noodles, five-minute yeah, rice. We're, we're, like, we're talking about driving a Honda... Like, I, I, I drove a Honda Accord for years. There's nothing wrong with driving a Honda Accord. So I, I. I tried to buy a new Honda Accord, but they didn't make them a V6. Anyway, enough about Hondas. <laughs> you need to act like you're making no money and live on no money so you earn more than you're spending i'm gonna say it again you have to earn more than you spend by spending less than you earn 
-hmm. and dramatically so guys so what you're going to try to do is let yourself off the hook and say well i'm i'm saving five ten percent of my my income well okay that's great but we're challenging you to do even more 20 30 percent of your income and most people they just don't want to give up their lifestyle uh in order to set themselves up uh, for future gain. Yeah, it's on, on saving and spending less. I think a lot of people have a mindset. A lot of people don't. They just spend everything they got. Some other people say, well, I'm maxing out or I'm contributing to my 401k or my IRA. And then that gets me set up for retirement and I'll spend everything else. Right. And that, that won't do it either. Here's a thought experiment for you is most people don't save enough uh, or they don't spend uh, less than they may because they just assume that they're going to work forever. Okay. But what if I told you that you cannot work a day after the age of 35 and everything you save until your 35th birthday, you have to live on for the rest of your life. Then what would you do? People would behave very differently, very differently. And that's what we're trying to get you guys to understand uh, and implement in your lives right now is let's put a plan together for you to quit work. And and in order to do that, you've got to get totally serious about uh, frugality. Uh, not for frugality's sake, but in order to have the lifestyle that you want down the road. Yeah, and in, including that, you have to stop buying liabilities. Stop buying stuff that you don't need. And definitely never buy a liability uh, on payment plan or on a credit card or, uh, or on a loan. You know, that, that to me, we're going to talk about compounding interest here in a second and how that is the eighth wonder of the world and how powerful it is, but it is powerful in the other direction. If you're, you're paying interest on money you don't have in order to have a thing that you don't even want. That decreases in value. That, yeah. That's okay. going down in value or maybe worthless as soon as you buy it. Yeah. Yeah. So liability, right. Is something that does not pay you. It doesn't pay you. And nine times out of 10, it's going down in value, mm-hmm. right? Like that. That's a liability. It's not paying you. So you, you bought this thing and it doesn't give you any more money in return. The money machine is broke. You, you put the money in and it just doesn't give any money out. And every now and then it may suck some more money back into this, this thing. Yeah, that's right. And it gets to the point where most people end up having so many liabilities that you see them run into the tiniest financial problem. And then they're, they're like hacking off an arm, you know, selling this thing and, and losing all kinds of money because it, it dropped in value. And you're only realizing that loss when you sell it. When you have to, then you have to realize that loss, which sucks. And liabilities can be uh, pretty much anything on a payment plan. It can be cars. It can be your even your house. Uh, it can be a liability because it, it, it costs you money every month to live there. It can be student debt. Uh, you know, it can be credit card debt. Anything that's sucking money out of you every month or that you paid and is worthless. So we want to stay away from all that. All right. I hold, think, so hold on. One so more. it's it's kind of an order, right? So we're, we're we're not spending everything we make to have some left over, and we're not buying liabilities. So if you have liabilities with that extra money you're saving from step one, we're gonna pay off and get rid of those liabilities right now. We're yeah. just we're just gonna do it. If you're serious, if you're if you're tired, if you want it bad enough, you're gonna. Spend less money, and you're going to get rid of those liabilities. So it stops sucking up additional cash, and we're going to start looking for those opportunities where it's going to give us cash back. So that's that's next. But you got to get rid of the liabilities first. You can't proceed until you go to this step. Yeah. Okay, next one, and it's controversial, uh, but I'm going to say it. Saving uh, makes you poorer. And you're like, well, Joel, you just told me to spend to less save. than I make yeah. or to save money. I agree. Uh, we did. And so when you are saving money, if you put that money in an account – uh, and you leave it there for five years or 10 years, is that money worth more or less than when you put it in? Yeah. yeah let's talk about when like Brian graduated college. If his parents gave him a $5,000, like congrats, son, graduating college, here's $5,000, you go, you go start your life. And then he gives him a little slap on the ass and sends him on his way, right? If he put that $5,000 in his savings account, back then he probably could have bought you know, a, a car, or down payment on a car, you know, that would that would that would have gone a long way. Maybe now you might have been well, able to buy a house back yeah, then. Back then it. I could have bought a house really? for five thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, boom. <laughs> so today, what does five thousand dollars get you? That gets you like a nice that, it's a nice fridge. That's yeah. a nice washer and dryer combo. You're not driving shit with five thousand dollars. Yeah, if I just stuck that five thousand away and still had, you know, maybe five thousand dollars in there, I couldn't buy anything. So a house back then, seriously. Or yeah, washer and dryer now. So let's let's flip that on its head, right? We took that same five thousand dollars, right? Smack in the ass, sent you on your way. Good luck, son. And you invested it in like Walmart stock or or 
pick any stock, right? Like I'm not going to say the major ones. Pick any anything that's still around today. If you invested in it back then, five thousand dollars, that would be so much money, yeah, right? Can you imagine the compounding if it was making even fifteen percent a year. That five thousand, fifteen percent a year. It, I don't know what it'd be. A couple million probably. Yeah, and so the whole point of the exercise is to get you to understand that saving isn't isn't the end all you can save the money but here's how saving goes for most people is they they spend less than they make and they put this in a savings account yep and that money's over there and it builds up and their eyes get really big and they're like man five thousand so there's something over there man ten thousand sitting over there and they start planning the vacation yeah they start saying man i i need a new car i love that new caddy you know, and so they immediately begin to think of how to spend the savings. <laughs> I love the new yeah. caddy. That, that's a problem. All right. And another thing that happens is if it's sitting in a savings account, what happens is life will happen and you'll, your car will break down or you know, you'll, you'll need the money for something and you'll, you'll use it as an excuse to get to the savings. So not mm-hmm. only is the savings account, the money's going down in value, but it's there available for you to blow it on something that you shouldn't be spending it on. And yeah. so that's why that, that, that's one of the reasons why say, we say saving makes you poorer is you got to do more with the money. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one other reason why saving makes you poor is the, I, the mentality of saving uh, can get you trapped up in, in trying to save pennies and, and you're, you're, you're not working on focusing on making dollars. Yeah. And so if you're clipping coupons for hours a day or hours a week to save five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, yes, you're saving and you can feel good about that. That's not going to move the needle here. We need you to spend your time more wisely. Uh, you know, we'll talk about it, but financial education, focusing on learning about asset classes and things like that, not clipping coupons. So, several things about saving that we don't like. The the biggest thing with saving that I hate is people think there's like a, a period at the end of it, right? Like it's savings. That's it. Like, what do you do after that was, was kind of my, yeah. like, what do you do after you save it? You know, do we just like save up millions of dollars in cash and then when we retire and stop earning money, we just take that millions and we just spend a little bit every month until we're out of money and then we have zero dollars. Of course not, yeah. right? People think savings is, okay, I'm going to save, like Joel said, and for that vacation, or I'm going to save and then I'm going to use that for the car. I'm gonna, they don't have a, a mindset of investing it, right? Right. So what, yeah, what do we do with it after it's saved? We allocate it to investments, right? We invest it. So we're, it's like spending it. It's familiar. It sounds familiar. You can do it like spending it. It feels the same. It kind of gives you the same euphoria, but instead of it disappearing immediately, it actually goes into this investment vehicle and earns more money. It grows. It goes to work for you. And so that brings us to the next point and it's time is money. And what we mean by that is you have to take, uh, I don't know what I want to say about compounding interest. God, somebody help me. Yeah, so time is money, right? <laughs> if you, it's, it's not about saving dollars. It's about getting dollars in the market and letting compounding interest do its thing. So you have to have time for compounding interest to do its thing. You have to have 20, 30 years yeah, paying start in, early. you know, right. five, ten, fifty thousand yeah. dollars $50,000 a year. So a big key to getting rich is is starting early because everybody has about the same amount of life and it compounding interest really starts working uh 20 30 years into the game and so what most people do is they don't focus on investing until their 30s or 40s or 50s i mean if you're if you're 30 or 35 and you haven't started saving sorry, saving, investing your savings into, you know, assets, then you are behind the eight ball and you've cost yourself so many millions of dollars down the line. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you can get going in your early twenties, man, you give it so much time to work. And so that's why we have to begin, get you in a mindset of time is money, but uh, not just time is money is compounding interest is a powerful tool. And if you have enough time, it will get you anywhere you want to go. Yeah, I would like to do that example that I gave five thousand dollars, you know, forty years ago at fifteen percent. If I'd invested it at fifteen percent, which you know, real estate can do, Walmart stock probably has done. I'd like to see what that number is. I I, I guarantee it's over two million bucks. So I use that as an example, but it's actually a true story. My grandfather, his dad gave him five thousand dollars in in Walmart stock or something when he died. You know, and he just, he never took anything out of it. And he always sets the dividends up on reinvestment. Yeah. And that $5,000 from the time his dad died to the time he died turned into like $200,000. Yeah, 5000 to 200000 Just reinvesting yeah. the dividends and keeping it in the market 20 years in a, in a growing, relatively large cap company. I mean, I don't know what Walmart was back then, but it, I mean, it was, it was big enough to, 
to be public and buy shares of. Yeah. So, I wonder so. how many of our listeners know the rule of 72. I don't even know the rule of 72. So well, teach then, me something, man. then you get, you get educated today. I like it. So the rule of 72 is talking about your $5,000. Wait, example. wait, wait. Does Brian know about this rule of 72 over here? I've heard Joel mention it before. Yeah. So that's okay, a no. Okay. We got nobody that's knows this. No. All right. Rule of 72 seven is years. seven years to double your money. You divide 72 by the rate of annual rate of return. And that tells you how quick your money doubles. How quick. Okay. Yeah. You're, I knew that. So if let's say that you're 72, you divide by pick a number, uh, you know, where we get 20%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so 20% has us doubling our money every three and a half years. Divide 72 by 20. Okay. But if, let's say you divide 72 by 6%. Uh, you can do that math for us, can't you, Brian? 72 divided by 6 is about 12. It's like 12. Point. <laughs> about 12. It's, it's about 12. 12. It's uh, exactly 12. So if you're only getting 6% return on your money, then it's going to take 12 years to double it. Yeah. Okay. But if you get 12%, it doubles in six years. And you get 24%, doubles in three. Yeah. And so that's an easy way to, to kind of get a handle on, hey, I know I can get 12% on my money, uh, so I know it'll double every six years. And so, you know, each time I, I save $5 at Starbucks or I don't eat out and I save $30 on a, on a, a meal at a restaurant, okay, I can just start doubling that every six years and yeah. I can see what it's worth when I'm, when I'm retirement age. Yeah. For everyone out there, because there's just so many people <laughs> that are saying, man, how do you find something that earns 12%? That's so much money. Or you guys say you earn 20. Nobody gets 20% on their money. We, yeah. We've actively deployed over $22 million through Criterion, and all of that is earning more than 20% on its money. Yeah, yeah. It's, definitely it's possible. possible. Okay, we got, we're going to keep it short. We got to keep going here. The next one. In order to get rich uh, quick is you have to work uh, daily on your financial education. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mo you know, when I graduated college, we were living in a one bedroom apartment, 600 square feet, small, cheap. And I didn't really know what to do. Uh, and it wasn't until I came across books and CDs that, that lit my mind on fire and opened a whole new world. Lit of, you up. Yeah. Lit me up about money, investing, compounding interest. You know, mm. profit and loss, returns, risk, all these things. And Getting it, lit up just thinking about it. And, and so I changed my thinking. I may have been thinking about, you know, working out and ultimate Frisbee and, and in my day job. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking about what rich people think about. Because you know, your financial education, you have to understand wh how, what, what does a P&L look like? And what are good rates of return? And what are the asset classes that I might be able mm. to invest in? You know, what are stocks versus bonds? You know, a lot of people, they're like, I don't really want to, I don't want to think, I don't like money. I don't like those kind of things. I want to think about. It's high frequency. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that's fine. Hopefully your spouse uh, is doing, is, is doing sure. that. But if you don't have anybody in your household that makes money a priority, then you're not going to have a lot of yeah. it. Yeah. So that, that's a great example, right? Like I, I think in your particular relationship, you're, you're not paying all the bills, right? Is that, is that too much information? I mean, that's really, no, uh, my, my household, my wife, uh, Becca, she pay, she handles the household bills for me. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be you, right? Like we're, a lot of us are business owners. A lot of us are entrepreneurs or, or what have you. We, you realize very fast when you're an entrepreneur that you have to do everything and you have to wear all these hats. And most of them you suck at and you don't want to do. Yeah. Most people don't want to pay their bills, but you've got to have someone in your life that makes it their mission because just like we started this episode, if you don't want it, you're not going to go like spending less money is uncomfortable. Investing all of the money you just made is uncomfortable. All of this stuff is not easy and it's, it's very uncomfortable to do, but we're saying the math plays out on paper. It, it is. It's uncomfortable and, until it isn't. And we've talked about this before, Brian, at the, the jobs that we've worked at together at companies is a lot of people spend a lot of time being good at certain things mm -hmm. and, and they, they'll, you'll be good at whatever you focus on. Uh, but money has to be one of those things. If you want to have a lot of money, if you want to make you know less money mistakes, if you want to earn higher rates of return on your money, if you want to have more freedom from your money, you have to make that a priority. But most people don't. They say, I want to be a good engineer. I want to be a good teacher. I want to be a good salesman. And so I, that money's not what I want to focus yeah. on. Okay. There's going to be a price to pay for that. And what we're saying is you need to actively spend time every day working on your financial education, reading books, listening to mentors, getting ideas. And what, one thing you brought up, Braden, is you have to change, you might have to change your circle of influence on some level. Mm -hmm. If you're not hanging out with anybody that 
that you know is an entrepreneur, a business owner, or wealthy, uh, then you're going to be limited because you don't you won't know what you don't know. But hanging around people that want that are where you want to go, or at least further in the direction that you want to go, they're going to spark ideas. They're going to talk about investments. They're going to increase your financial education just by being around them. Yeah, and it doesn't really take a lot of time. It's it's mostly a mindset. Like it's okay to be a good engineer or a good teacher for but, sure. But at lunch or or a couple hours after work, then get some of this financial education, right? And if you're thinking about it, then then it's most likely going to happen. If you're sure. not, like you said, if you're yeah. not, it's not. It's definitely not going to happen. Join an investment club in your city. Yeah. Join a real estate club. Get get involved with be, uh, our business owners group. You know, so, something that gets you around people that are talking about uh, early retirement companies investments because uh, you're just going to absorb so much knowledge and, it, and that's got to be a key I think in order to get rich quick so to speak yeah Braden, you made a good point that that it's uncomfortable think about how many of our investors when they first invest with us they think oh it's risky and I'm uncomfortable and they ask lots of questions after about the first deal or two they don't ask any more questions basically right they get comfortable with it uh, we've educated them on how to look at some of the financial information we send them on our deals and, and now they're comfortable and it, they don't feel like it's as risky or, or they're not as uncomfortable. It just gets easier. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's that way with everything. Um, and, and you've just got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And to Joel's point about mentors, mentors are a must. It, I don't think it's an optional add on. I, I think you have to have somewhere that's achieved where you want to go because you're going to run into a million roadblocks and you're going to try to get, distracted and, and pushed off your path and you're going to need somebody who's been there to say hey man calm down it's okay this isn't the end of the world we've been there we've done this before just keep your head down keep focused we'll get there yeah. and pe again people are scared of asking people questions we we get people that email us all the time and ask questions and i'm i'm more than happy to respond it may take me a week 10 days but i'm more than happy to respond and and tell you everything i know because generally speaking when you're complimenting somebody and asking questions about them, which is how you should be approaching this scenario. Hey, man, I saw you're into so-and-so. I saw you develop this building. It's absolutely gorgeous. Would love to know how you did that. Is there any way I can take you out for a beer or lunch or coffee sometime? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they're going to say yeah. yeah. Even, even if it's a month out. And then just ask great questions. We, we get asked out by banks and, and title companies and, and insurance and just everything soliciting their services. It's, it's normal. Hey, how, are, how did you get into that? It's awesome. I would love to learn more. How can I be a part? Yeah. Ask that question. How okay. can I be a part? So right. now you're, you're spending less, uh, dramatically less than you make. And you are not just saving, because saving makes you poor, is you're getting that ready to invest. Then we, you understand the power of compounding interest, and you're setting up a plan and maybe to quit work early. And then you are also spending time uh, finding uh, mentors and financially educating yourself. Mm -hmm. So now we're ready for the, the next step. We have two more. And this one is... Uh, the rich buy assets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I do a lot of searches, um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos when I'm kind of have downtime. And the theme that keeps coming up when I type in stuff about money or wealthy or whatever is the rich buy assets. I find it funny that you're in your position in life and you still have downtime on YouTube and you're typing in money and how to get rich and <laughs> yeah. assets. Really? Hey, I, I, I want to learn. I, there's, yeah. there's, there's, still, there's still plenty out there for me, learned, right? to me to learn. How yeah. to get rich. Yeah, how to have more <laughs> money than I... Babe, what's, what's drop shipping? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so uh, that's something that, that I did not know even existed really as a kid is okay, yeah. you mean there's a golden goose out there that once you buy it, it just it, it just throws money into your pocket every month, and increases every in year, value every and it, year, and, the, and it gets bigger every year and has yeah. more, lays more gold. I, I just didn't know that you could just go buy a money generating machine. Yeah, I didn't either. Plan a money tree. Uh, plan a money tree. Those that, that was just so foreign to me. Only thing I thought is, well, you work. You, yeah. you get a job, hard work equals more money, and work longer equals more money, work harder equals more money. Well, uh, uh, did your parents own assets or did they work? Did they work jobs? They work jobs. Mine worked, Mine worked jobs too. And I, I went and got a job because it was familiar. Yeah, me too. So let's break that familiarity up and go talk to anybody who you're like, man, you know, they just really seem like they have something cool going on. I wonder how they did it. I guarantee they own a ton of assets. Yeah. It's just guaranteed. Watch Shark Tank. Everybody's seen Shark Tank. What are they doing? They're buying an asset. Yeah. They're buying a company. Something that's tangible. It's typically got assets in there, and it produces excess cash flow to the benefit of the owner. It makes the owner money. That's an asset. 
Mm-hmm. It, it's just so important. And most people, once again, they plan on working their entire life. And so they're not thinking in terms uh, of buying assets, but buying assets allows you to make money while you sleep every day, every month, every year, my net worth is going up and I'm not having to do anything for it. I mean, if I just didn't do a thing for the rest of my life, I would get richer tomorrow and I would get richer five years from now and I would get richer 10 years from now because I have assets that are growing in value and putting money in my pocket. And so your whole goal in order to get rich uh, in this life is, is to convert earned income mm. into buying assets, into passive income, quit your job, make more money. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what we're encouraging you to do is to get, get your, your mindset is how do I, how do I save up some money from my, my job and, and invest that into assets that make me money while I sleep? That, that's literally, I mean, probably 90% of people that are ultra wealthy, that's what they do. Yeah. Do you want to know why ultra somewhere. wealthy people don't pay taxes? I mean, I, I know you know why, but it's because they don't have income. They don't have taxable income. They just own shit and it pays them. Yeah, and assets, we're, we're the assets, some assets do uh, shed income. Right, but, that's but taxable. Then, that's sure. taxable, but then they, they use the depreciation of that asset in order to offset that income. Okay. So, go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to, that kind of brought us to our, our last point. Last point. Me, which is, you've done all these things. Is that, is that it? Is there anything you should be doing to, to monitor what's going on, to check in? Yes. So I think it's really important to, and the last point we have here is begin to track your net worth. And so if you're listening, are you tracking your net worth? If I asked you, hey, what's your net worth? What would you say? What would they say? Yeah, they would. Uh, I don't know. Like, How? You have no idea? Well, then we got to find out. Yeah. And it's, it's a weird thing with the brain is if we don't... It's almost like, I don't really want to know, you know, I, I don't want to know what my net worth is. I don't want to put all my liabilities down because then I'm faced with what I'm purchasing that isn't helping me. I don't want to put my credit card and my student loans and my, you know, my, all my payments down. And I'm, oh man, I'm, I'm broke. Right. But tracking your net worth, it, it will put it into your subconscious and it gives you a target. And the powerful thing is once you have that number, whatever it is, you can go to work. Your subconscious will go to work on if you have a negative net worth getting it a zero and then once you're at zero you can grow it okay i'm going to grow my net worth this month by not doing x by not eating out by not buying the pair of shoes by not you know whatever uh, and so then the next month it grows and the next month it grows and you'll get more excited because you can see it growing because yeah. you're tracking it or if, if the opposite happens if it goes down then you know I've, I've got to make some more changes now it could go down temporarily because the stock market goes down or something like that yeah but, but it could actually go down and and if it is you know you gotta you know you have to make some changes i love it on the upside and the downside and like you said it, when you start out it's discouraging but once you put it on paper and you kind of sulk for a few days, you realize like, okay, F this Excel sheet. I'm not, I'm not as rich as that piece of paper says I am, yeah. e even though you are. Okay, yeah. but that's the secret between me and you. I won't tell anybody. You figure that out on the upside too. Like you get all these assets, you start doing deals, you, you know, you're moving and shaking, you're figuring it out and you're like, oh, babe, I think, I think we're millionaires. <laughs> like, we're not millionaires. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking have... about? We ain't got no money. It really doesn't matter, right? Like, it's all about the cash flow. And I, I think that's a great way to end this because, like, like I said earlier, it's not about getting to retirement and having saved millions of dollars and then just slowly spend millions of dollars. We're trying to get to retirement having invested millions of dollars, never spend that, and then live off of the cash flow. It's like, it's all about the cash flow. You can, you can be worth a billion dollars, and if you don't have any cash flow and you don't have a way to get you know, any sort of cash flow, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. So like on the negative side and the upside, it's nice to look at. It keeps you on track. You have to measure it. It, it tells you if you're doing the right things and rewards you. But at the end of the day, assets are illiquid. So it's not like this stuff is just showing up on your Bank of America app or, or wherever you yeah. bank. And that's why it's an important to track it too, because once you start doing deals, you need to be able to scale that and you need to be able to track it. And if you die, you need to be able to will it and put it in a state and everything like that. You, you've got to monitor it. That, and we talked about goal setting a million times before to achieve a goal, you've write, got to write down a tangible number. You've got to write down tangible benchmarks. If you want to be a millionaire, and that's a, I'm just picking that arbitrarily out of the air. A lot of people set, have that goal of, I want to be a millionaire. Well, how are you going to do that unless you figure out what a million dollar uh, net worth 
uh, yeah. personal financial statement looks like. Yeah, and, and for people who want to do it, it's really easy. Down, just Google per- personal financial statement, yep. and a bunch of templates and spreadsheets will come up. You just kind of fill in the blanks, and it'll kind of add it and subtract it all up for you. Hey, come uh, down with the net worth. You know, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Obviously, I, could, I wouldn't be able to accommodate everybody, but if there's somebody out there that says, hey, I want, I want a financial checkup, and I want, I want Joel to evaluate where I'm at, yeah. I'll do that. But the first thing I'm going to do is force you to fill out a personal financial statement, and we're going to go through every expense you have and every asset you have and every liability you have, and we're going to put it all down on paper, and we're going to look at it together, yeah. and, and we're going to talk about That's it. A good idea. Because otherwise, you don't, you don't know where you are. And I, I was watching this how to, how to Have Your Rich Life show on, YouTube, oh, yeah. on uh, Netflix, and and he he goes in Love he, that. when he, you're not YouTubing about money and net worth you're on Netflix, Netflix about figuring money. out how to get rich. Well, it was interesting because he goes to average couples and uh, he he starts they, they he just analyzes their bank statements. He looks at where their money's going. He looks at what they earn, and then he sits them down. And most of them don't even know where their money's going. Yeah, they don't even they don't even realize they're spending more than they make because it's like I don't really want to think about it. Or hey, well I grew up poor, and so whenever I get money in my bank account, I want some. I just I just buy it. Right. Yeah. And, and so he helps them work through some of these things that are holding them back. Yeah. But anyway, uh, if you're doing all these things, finally track that net worth and watch how your excitement grows. And that excitement will motivate you to do more. And then your net worth will grow and it'll keep it'll it'll keep going. The cycle will keep going. Yep. Brian, you signature your line. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, we done. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks. All right.